Hello and welcome to another episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this episode we will be covering the classic Baldur's Gate. Now I discovered this game through a fellow YouTube user, Game Hoarder. He did a playthrough on it and I saw it and I was like, wow, I really need to try this game. Upon further research, I discovered that this game has quite a lot of merit and is referred to as one of the best games of all time and one of the best RPGs of all time, if not the best. So I was really excited to try this game and upon playing it, I discovered that it deserves these merits very much. This is a very excellent game. Now on to Baldur's Gate. You start the game off by creating your character. Now this has a very in-depth character creation in Baldur's Gate. Different alignments, different classes, you can really scope out the character that you want to spend the rest of your game with. Now after you create your character, you start off the game in a town called Candlekeep. Now, your foster father, Gorion, has informed some of the locals to instruct you on fighting and different ways, basically a tutorial for you to get the feel of the world. Now, after you figure out how to do things in the game, the basics, you're instructed by your foster father, Gorion, that you have to prepare for a journey and that you must leave Candlecape, but without explaining to you why. Unfortunately, during your escape, you are ambushed and Gorion unfortunately sacrifices himself and loses his life so that you can live and move on. Finding out that these people that are ambushing you are after you and not Gorion. Now this game may, this, the story in this game may start off very simple but as, it, as the different chapters progress and you put more time into this game the, the tale that is told in this game is very epic and I found myself from the, the prologue, not even chapter one, addicted to this game, and then I had to keep playing. The different settings, the characters, everything in this game flows perfectly, and I do not want to spoil that to you if you didn't play the game. This is a tale that you must experience for yourself. Now on to the gameplay. Now the gameplay in Baldur's Gate is very unique. This game takes place in a Forgotten Realms setting of Dungeons and & Dragons, and also uses a modified version of the Dungeons and Dragons 2nd uh, edition rule set. Now I do recommend trying to study this a little bit just in case you want to know about the mechanics more before you jump into Baldur's Gate because the learning curve can be a bit high especially if you're a newcomer to this type of game. But I found out just going through battles and experiencing the world and putting the time into it that even a person like myself that wasn't very familiar with Dungeons and Dragons could jump into this and put in the time into it and learn the world and understand the mechanics and even though this game is a challenge I found that even though at first it may seem impossible that I would never understand this game after learning the world and the mechanics and putting hours into it like anything you learn it a lot better and it doesn't become so impossible anymore now since you control a party in Baldur's Gate party management is a very big key to the success that you will have in this game there are certain characters in this game that will join you on your quest and they all have certain classes and different alignments and you must study these you must study their pros and their cons to determine the success that you will have in this game now let me explain you see battles in this game are not just click here click there or send them here and hope for the best you have to be focused and involved in every battle that you're in and this game stresses that let me give you an example there's these creatures that early on they might give you a problem but once you get better gear or better level up a couple more times that they become easier so I thought that I didn't have to worry about them anymore and after gaining a couple of levels and outfitting my character better we ran into a couple of these creatures and I just sent my party in one spot and hoped for the best so you might guess it didn't go out the way I wanted it to. See, my, char my characters were doing fine, except for my main character. He killed a couple of the creatures, but two of the creatures got lucky critical hits on them, and it killed them. So you see, you must focus on this game. Now, the AI in this game is really well done, and I really don't have any major complaints about it. The way the creatures and the enemies that you fight in this game set up to, I to attack you is beautiful I mean let me tell you something I really believe this and I've seen it many times in this game so I can vouch for it there were times that we were about to win this fight and the creatures knowing that they were gonna lose this fight decided to gang up on my the, the weakest person in my party or the one that's gotten taken the most damage and decide to send a F you to me by killing off my party member just as a final farewell so that even though I've beaten them I have to go spend gold to revive the character that they have just 
killed before they died. The, I love the AI in this game. And the only minor complaints that I have is sometimes when you give certain actions to your party AI, like to go the, to go a long distance, they might get trapped or they might go a way that you didn't want them to go. But that's perfectly forgivable because this is a beautifully well-crafted game, especially when it comes to the AI. Another thing you might notice in Baldur's Gate is that the leveling system is slower compared to other RPGs. It does take a little bit to level up, and I am not joking when it comes to that. But this actually became a good thing for me. Let me explain. See, when I first played the game, I tried rushing into the main story a little too much, and it showed that I couldn't progress towards the main point. You see, this game is very can be very hard, but it is not unfair. You see, when you are coming upon troubles in this game, it is usually something that you did. Maybe you didn't bring enough healing potions into battle. Maybe you didn't set your cert your characters up the right way. Or maybe, like me, you forgot to level up. And I didn't mind the slow leveling in this game because it really gave me a chance to explore and learn the combat system. So that it, did be, it, it didn't become the pain that it was in the beginning to stretch out throughout the whole game. I actually got used to it and I learned it. And now, I just had to learn how to master it. The combat in this game is very well done. The last thing I want to discuss when it comes to gameplay is the alignment system. I love games that can execute these very well, and Baldur Gate does just that. You see, there are different versions of good and evil in this game, but what really helps is the fact that it's really known in this world, and in your party especially. Let me explain. See, I tried to recruit a good character into my evil party. Now, some of the characters I had were okay with it, but this certain good character didn't like it at all. She came into my party, no problem, so I thought there was, I thought it was with ease. But, come to find out, these two characters start arguing, and then a fight goes down, and my good character kills the evil character in my party, which means I have to spend gold that I really didn't have to bring him back. And that's what I, that's one of the many things that I love about Baldur's Gate, that they did this very well. And it really brings you into the atmosphere of this game all the more. Now I have no problem with the sound in this game. It is not fully voice acted, so which means you're going to be doing quite a bit of reading, but that's fine because the game is written extremely well. But the few parts where you do get voice acting, they're done very well, like the banter in between your party members or the narrator. And it cracks me up because I used to dread hearing his name in the beginning. At one point, when you're traveling between areas, you have the chance of getting ambushed. And every time I heard his voice when I was traveling between areas, I knew that I was going to get ambushed. And I, it, used to, it made me laugh now, but I used to hate it because it meant I had to haul ass because I was going to die because I wasn't that good at the game. But the sound is done very well in this game. But what's better is the atmosphere that surrounds everything. This game is beautiful. Everything is, even though the graphics are not 3D or they're not today's standard and there a while ago who cares because this game is beautiful the detail that went into everything in this game the cities you visit like Baragos the places that surround it like the forest and everything the stronghold whatever is in this game is detailed very well and you could tell that the developers took their time into making this game and it is beautiful even the ugly creatures in this game they're beautiful in their own way because they're done extremely well that's what makes this game so great and that's what draws you into this world this game is a classic example of gameplay over graphics and it's a classic example of you don't need the shiniest trinkets to draw people into the world and the graphics do prove it because even though it's not modern or anything it's still great because of how detailed it is and because every spot that you go into even the corner or of an inn or anything that you head into in this game took time and it's crafted very beautifully when this game and you can tell the developers put a lot of love and time into this and that's what's so great I have to admit at first especially with the learning curve in the beginning for me I did not understand why Baldur's Gate got the praise that it has but after countless of hours into the game and experiencing it it has shot up to my top list of my favorite games of all time this game is executed almost flawlessly and you can tell that the developers put a lot of love and a lot of time into this game and this is why I recommend Baldur's Gate to anyone in the RPGs anyone in the stories anyone in the party management whatever whatever your excuse is play this game at least once in your life 
because this is really my top five. It's probably going to go to my top one soon because just thinking about it, this game has really captivated me so much. It's even gotten me into looking into the culture around Dungeons & Dragons, a culture that I knew nothing about before playing this game. That's how captivating and great it was. I mean, I have nothing but good things to say about this game, and I am glad, and I, th I give thanks to Game Hoarder, the person that indirectly showed me this game through his uh, playthroughs, because without that, I wouldn't know nothing about this game. So, get it. That's all I have to say about it. Play it. And thanks for watching the, re the retrospective. Have a good day and stay tuned for more. And if you like, subscribe and comment.